Well, we'd like to welcome all of you today to the Entrepreneurship Seminar. Alan is out of town and he asked if I would uh, introduce our speaker. He didn't leave me any particular instructions regarding the class, so I assume that you're all on board and doing the things that you need to do in order to uh, get credit and that you're uh, paying attention and not procrastinating. So just make sure you're doing those sort of things. I'd like to introduce our speaker, uh, Cindy Beecher, today. After working more than 20 years in the banking industry, Cindy Beecher took a giant leap into entrepreneurship and has never looked back. In 2007, Beecher joined her son to launch Alpine Auto Transporters. In 2010, after 18 months of negotiation, she achieved her biggest goal, forming a partnership between eBay Motors and Alpine Auto Transporters to become one of only three approved vehicle transporters for eBay Motors. Alpine Auto Transporters has now become a multi-million dollar company with offices in Salt Lake and in Phoenix. Customer service has always been key to the company's success. She says, if I can do even one thing each day to improve somebody's life, whether it's an employee or a customer, I have been successful. She adds, if each person in the company makes the same effort, a business will succeed. And may I applaud that statement. I think that is so true. In February 2012, Cindy was recognized as one of the 30 women to watch by Utah Business Magazine. Outside the office, Cindy has been involved in Habitat for Humanity, Crossroads Urban Center, Odyssey House, and the YWCA. We are really privileged and pleased to have one of the uh, finest entrepreneurs in the state of Utah be with us today. Let's all give a warm welcome, Snow College, uh, to Cindy Beecher. Can you hear me now? Okay. Um, as Doug said, my name is Cindy Beecher, and um, I have had the pleasure to um, start a company with my son in 2008. What I'd like to talk to you today about is I'll tell my story. It's not unique. There's a lot of things about it that are different um, from other people, but what makes all of us in this room unique is what we're going to talk about today. Um, what I want you to think about more than anything is what I've put up here is the right place at the right time and planning your success. Really, what you need to know is you have no idea when the right place is or the right time, and it's you that needs to plan for your own success. That's what I did. And you have to be able to have the tools that you need for the future to be able to recognize when these things are going to happen and when the opportunity is to jump and to take that scary, scary step. Let me give you a little bit of background about where I'm from and how this all happened. I worked in the banking industry for most of my adult life. That was my passion, and I believed it was going to be my career until I retired. Um, I had been fortunate to, to spend the last 15 years with Wells Fargo Bank. Um, I had just become a vice president in 2006 and was very, very, very happy, um, enjoyed my job. In 2006, my oldest son graduated from Arizona State University with two degrees um, and high honors with both of them. Um, my husband and I, which I'd like to introduce, my husband Dan is here with me today. Um, my husband and I were very, very proud of him, 
and we felt like we had we had arrived our son had graduated from college he was on his way to being what he wanted to be and we were going to go on with our careers like i said that was in 2006 in 2007 late he said to me mom i want to talk to you about something it's okay and he says i have a thought i want to start a business i said well that's great whatever you need we'll support you and he said, no, I want you to start a business with me. Um, I was a little bit confused. Up until that point, my son had referred to both myself and his father as the wage monkeys. And he, that was with love. He, that wasn't a negative thing. But we were here, we believed, to support them to go to work, get a paycheck every month, every week and help to support them to do what they needed to do and we and we were happy I said I don't understand I have this career at Wells Fargo here I'll do whatever I can to help you well he proceeded to go and tell me what his plan was and it sounded pretty good they said well we're gonna move we want to move cars all over the country and one in a senior year, he had an internship with Enterprise Rent-A-Car and ran their fleet and did a pretty good job of it. And I said, okay, that'll be great. He said, Mom, I don't have the management skills. You have people skills. You know how to get people to do what they need to do. You know how to team up. You know how to lead. You know how to move through everything that needs to be done. Why I, my strengths are more in line with sales goals, budgets, those kinds of things that I had never, I don't have any practice with. So we went, I said, okay, I'll think about it. I went to my husband, and I said, what do you think? And he looked at me and said, oh, no, we're on a ride that is going to, who knows where it's going to take us. But he supported us. And he says, I am the wage monkey. I'm going to continue to go to work every day, support you, and you both can do what you want to do. So then, oddly enough, it's very ironic that I'm here this month at the anniversary of the financial meltdown. So at the, first, at the beginning of 2008, um, we had no idea what was going to happen in September. We were all at the bank working at our little desks and everything was going along just perfect. And I was starting a new business with my son. Well, I'll make a long story short, I refer to that time now as the car crash in the rearview mirror. I don't know if any of you have experienced that where you've been driving down the freeway and all of a sudden you look in the rearview mirror and an accident's happening behind you. And your thought is, wow. I can't believe that just happened. I, I, I come, you know, and you're just pleased that you weren't in that. That's what happened to me in September of 2008 when the financial meltdown happened and I was starting a new business with my son. I didn't know what was going to happen. I just knew that I had an opportunity and it was scary and I had to jump and move and see where it's going to take me. Oh, and I forgot to mention, I was just turning 50. And I was walking away from every single bit of retirement I'd built up my whole entire life that had just plummeted, and I lost 60% of it. So what did I have to lose, right? So let's talk, with that in mind, let's talk a little bit about what you're going to need to make these scary decisions. Maybe. There we go. Um, I own two companies. Actually, I own four companies. Um, you know about Alpine Auto Transporters. Um, the other company I own that we just purchased in two and maybe three months ago is Made Right of Utah. Um, that was another opportunity that I had, and we decided to um, go on that. And as of two weeks ago, um, it's up and running and doing very, very well. Um, so it, it was an opportunity that we it came right when we needed it. 
Okay, putting yourself in that place. When I started Alpine Auto Transporters, the most important thing to me was to identify the strengths and weaknesses going into to the partnership my son and I were going to have. Who else did we need? The second thing was to search out those people that complement the weaknesses. So I'm a people person. I know how to manage. I, I lead people. I'm very good at that. I don't know how to do sales plans and strategies and budgets and return on investment and all those kinds of things that I've learned a little bit about now, but still, I'm not really good at those. Um, and be open to unlikely partnerships. And another thing, listen. Listen to the things that are going on around you. If you pay attention to the little things that are out there that relate to what you're interested in that, that are also on the path of your weakness, you'll find that you learn a lot through the whole thing. Oh, excuse me. Is this the third one? Okay. Um, the next thing is when's the right time? Now you have people that tell you, you know, that person's successful because they were in the right place at the right time. They have no clue. It, it, it doesn't exist. It's a myth. Um, you, you simply have to make that for yourself. So when is the right time? Nobody knows but you. When it comes up, you have to be able to identify it. One of the things that will make that come to you easier is self-confidence. If you're self-confident with the things you do, the things you know, identifying those strengths and working with those and communicating with people that are in those areas, you'll be open to it whenever it comes because people are attracted to those who are self-confident in the areas of their strengths. Have a plan. But make sure you're open to changes. Plans are wonderful because they keep you focused. But if you're not open to changing any of those, you get in a rut. And you don't notice anything that's going on on the sides of you. So that's why if you make that plan and you're constantly listening to all the things that are coming from all sides, you can change and go a little bit over here. And then maybe you go a little bit over here. But the good thing about it is every single one of you have the opportunity to be what you want to be. You can, and you know, let's go back to my son. Um, he wanted to be an orthodontist. So we have a banker and a potential orthodontist that end up in a very successful automobile transportation logistics company. Um, so you can see how it will evolve for you. But we, we all have to be open to that. But it's the partnerships in your future that, are, that will be the most likely to make you successful in business. You can't do that yourself. Um, if you want to be a small business in your home, um, you have something you do very well, that's wonderful. But if you want to be a multi-million dollar company or something that is more than just you, you have to have a partner. What, what that is, is, is everybody's different. You know, everybody's partner is different. My partner happens to be my son. The next is rally your family and friends. They'll tell you the truth. When I went to my husband, he sat me down to the point we had a conversation, tears. You know, what am I going to do? Me as a mother, I felt like I can't tell my son no. Well, he says to me, you better tell him no if that's not what you want to do. It's not your responsibility anymore to make him successful. You sent him to college, and, and every, everything was supposed to work out. So if you speak honestly with them, and more importantly, family partnerships, whether it's business, friendship, you know, all of those kinds of things, it's very, very difficult. Running a business with a family member is difficult, but when it does work out, it's very, very successful because you have the, you have the ability 
to not dance around with all of it. Um, and what you also need to do is you're going to have Partnership is not the best word in this. You can have friends and family and people you interact with all the time, and they're going to be, they're going to be potential business opportunities for you. So, for example, um, you have a lab partner, and you get put with a lab partner, and I've heard through stories of my two sons, no, I got stuck with this lab partner. We're so different. It's so hard to communicate. They want to go do this, and I want to go do this. Well, it's because you're different, and you have these strengths, and they have those strengths. So those kinds of relationships throughout your life and throughout your college education are going to be very, very important because those are the people that can complement you for any future business that you may want to do. Um, Lab partners, study groups, community involvement, um, working out in your communities. Uh, it, it brings people together that have like hearts. Does that make sense? So when you go out and you do something in a community that you're passionate about, you may have different strengths and weaknesses in the business, but you have the same heart. You're working towards the same goals in the community for your families and those types of things. Not. Okay. Is that the end? Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll just let that go. Um, one of the next things that I really want to talk about is whether or not you feel like. In, your, in this day and age, college is everything. When I grew up, uh, we went, left high school and we moved right to working. You got a job. Um, you could be competitive out there. If you worked in a job for 20 years, you could work your way up the ladder. Um, you could be successful. And unfortunately, in your, in your world now, that's not usually an option. So... The college education and degrees that you're getting now are going to set the stage for your foundation. So if, if you believe that I'm here to do what my mom told me to do or my dad wants me to do, do it for you, more importantly. Um, because if you do this for you, and you get your foundation, and then you go out there, and you go into the world, again, you can do anything that you want. But those partnerships that you find along the way are what's going to put you into successful situations that you don't even know are going to happen yet. Let me tell you a little bit about Made Right, the company that we just purchased. Um, it's a residential cleaning. Have you all heard of Molly Maids? Those kinds of things. You see the little thing. It's like that. Um, the, it's, it's structured in the same way. We um, purchased the master franchise for the state of Utah um, with it. We had two people that came to us. Um, they were friends of the family. Um, had come, come to the luncheon when I was um, the recipient of the 30 under the 30 women award for Utah Business Magazine and they had been kind of tracking us and they came to us about a year ago and asked we would like to go into business with you and your son and at that point we were trying to, to make sure all the eBay contract was up and running and everything was gonna go right and we just didn't feel like it was in our best interest to um, diversify at that time that we couldn't really go on, go in the direction. So about six months ago, we decided that we had all of our eggs in one basket. One business was running three 
whole families. So what we had done was all the people that we hired, the, our staff, the wonderful people we have working for us, it was within three family units that we were all successful in working. So if anything happened to Alpine, we had three families that, that we had the responsibility for and that we wanted to make sure they could succeed and that they would have work. Alpine Auto Transporters is very cyclical. It, it goes, you know, you have the big times of the year and the slow ones. As you can imagine, people don't buy vehicles in the wintertime. So we have these points of the year where we don't have much going on that we're, we wanted to try to fill in. So we decided to go and speak with the, the, the partners that had come to us and say, okay, what do you want to do? How, how do you want to see this happening? And what they did was they looked at us and they said, we have a successful business already and you have a successful business already. Let's sit down in a room and go through all that we all do, see whose strengths are in what areas, who does what, what it, can we make this work? We did that for about twice a week for a month and sat down and it was, it's not very comfortable, I, I might add. It was really uncomfortable because we were used to working in a family situation and we were now bringing in people from the outside and it was a whole new world for us. And the reason that I'm bringing this up is because you may have somebody out there that comes to you and says, I'd like to do this, but you don't even know how to start. So simply taking the step, moving in that direction, and saying, let's talk about it. Let's figure out what we want to do. Um, you have companies like Microsoft, Apple, those, those kind of companies. Um, really, people are saying those are the right place at the right time. But they started just like we did, exactly the same way. We've had, we had a, um, in, at Alpine, when we went to business, we first went into business, there was no logistic software. We were thinking, how are we going to get all of these cars moved all across the country? And just to let you know, we've moved 40,000 cars in four years. So how are we going to logistically move all these cars across the country, keep everything in order, all the compliance done for everything, make sure that the rules are there, and, and get it all together? We, there wasn't any software out there. So what we decided that we wanted to do was start another company and, and make our own software. So we started uh, three years ago, and we hired a programmer and started what was called a company called Esonus. And he has developed our um, automobile logistics software, and it, it's testing right now. And that's how we keep track of everything. It's a massive production to make sure that you have you keep up with eBay Motors and all their customer service recommendations and our contracts. We have a large customer service team that takes all the orders, talks to all the customers. All those orders have to go to a dispatcher. She has to figure out how to move all those cars and put them on 10 car haulers and go from one coast to the other coast. And she does it single-handedly. She's amazing at it. But if she didn't have the software to manage it all, so now what we want to do, we had another gentleman that came in to us and said, how do you do all of this? I'm thinking about driving my own, uh, I want my own truck. How do you do it all? Well, we were talking to him about how, how he would fit in with our operation, and he said, I have somebody who would want who might want to use your software so now that led to another conversation we would have never had that conversation with that truck driver he just happened to call one day and then he said you know can can we have a conference call I want I want to see if I can drive for you 
So that interaction led to him now hooking us up with somebody that might want to buy our software and use it for, have you heard of Larry H. Miller? Larry H. Miller has so many dealerships. Can you imagine the logistics nightmare there trying to keep track of all those cars? So we now have something that they want to look at. So it, it kind of gives you an idea of going from working at a bank. You, you know, it's, you think of yourself as a, as, a, as a successful business person through your whole life. But then the road curves, you go another direction, and it's almost like you pick people up as you go. You move through your life, and, as you, and you realize, I can't do this alone. And you kind of pick people up as you go, and some of them fall off, and others come on, and you learn a lot, and it's not without its bumps and bruises and arguments and fights and tears and all of that that come with it but it's really super rewarding. One of the things going into entrepreneur ways of thinking, let me put it that way, is that people think that entrepreneurs make millions of dollars. Just because my company is a multi-million dollar company doesn't mean I make a million. You get to decide where you want to be based on the work you want to put into it. Now, I'm 55. Both of them, I've got one son that's an entrepreneur, another one that's a math teacher that's, going, that's getting his master's degree and going to teach college math. I don't want to make millions of dollars. I just want to be a successful wife, a mother, a grandmother, and a business person. So that drives me. However, my son, on the other hand, is 31. And he wants to make millions tomorrow. So you can imagine how the two of us butt heads when we have a meeting about the budgets and I want to go one direction and he wants to go another, but he he doesn't understand the work that it's going to cost to make that million because he has, seriously, six other companies. So I'm over here doing this, trying to make everything comfortable, and because that's where I'm comfortable. And he's building businesses, making sure everything's going okay, making sure the people are there to run them, and wanting to make the money that he f sees that he wants for his family. So... With that in mind, we have an agreement. He goes off and opens companies, and I go over here and run the ones he's got. He doesn't, he, I don't need a million. If you want to make a million, you go do that and have a good time. You know, it, you're, you're really super good at it. But me, it comes down to that first conversation I had with my partner. Yes, he's my son, but with my partner, I said, what do you want me to bring to the table? So what he wants me to bring to the table, I can manage people. And when it comes down to it, every single conversation, I manage people, he manages money. He makes sure that all the sales, that everything is going with the investments. He makes sure that all the numbers, the sales goals, the budgets. I make sure that people show up to work at 8 o'clock, leave at 5 o'clock, do what they need to do, are rewarded the way they need to be rewarded, and build those relationships. So it, it becomes very basic when it all gets all muddy and you've got all the people coming in and all the people dropping off. If it's basic, what are the strengths and the weaknesses of the core people that you have in the entrepreneurial, the business, the, you know, it, it's even as simple as um, if somebody wants to have a, an embroidery business where, you know, they, they put the, the logos on the hats and the shirts and things like that. It's the same 
Somebody can run a sewing machine and do all the embroidery, but somebody's got to do the books. Somebody's got to, so you may, you may have people here, artists and accountants. So those two kinds of people need to come together to form something that is, can grow. Because if you're someone, if I was myself in an office trying to run a transport logistics company, I'd never grow. You spend too much time rolling. And you take three steps forward and two back. And it's constantly doing that. But if you only have your expertise and the things you're good at, you can constantly take three steps forward. While the other person is taking those steps forward at the same time. And then if you have a glitch, you come together, make some adjustments, and then move on. One of the things that has been difficult and you, that you'll find um, when, when you graduate from college and you're starting to find the things that you gravitate to is mixing your family with your business. What you have going on in your head here doesn't always match with what's going on at home. Uh, to, to give you an example, my husband is a very successful chemical engineer. He's been that for many years, and he's very good at it. I have a really, really bad day with a bunch of truck drivers. He doesn't want to hear about it when I come home. He's had his day. I've had my day. Um, and it, 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 it becomes one of those things where it's just a balance. Everything about being an entrepreneur, being, having a successful business, having a successful family, your children, your grandchildren, all of that, your, your wives, your girlfriends, your moms, it's all a balance. If you don't work towards that balance, you're constantly picking up one side or the other. But the way to find the balance is simply recognizing that you need it. It's not always going to be perfect. So if you constantly have this, these conversations that are dropping one side, you know, I'm coming, for example, coming home and I'm telling my husband, well, you know, this and this and this happened and this car got stolen and this one got wrecked and da da da. And he's just kind of looking at me. And the same thing happens when he starts talking about, you know, petroleum properties or, you know, chemicals and things like that. But... If you realize that simply listening goes back to the listening, listening will, it helps you to stop, to balance, to recognize, to move through things. If he were to say to me, you know, not really interested in all of that. You, I uh, hope, hope you have a good day. I hope you have a better day tomorrow. Instead, you know what he does? He gives me a big hug and says, I'm so sorry you had a bad day. Um, what do you need from me? That, that's it. But your friends and your family and your partners and those kinds of things need the same recognition for balance in order to, fo to form the partnerships that you need to move forward to to form successful businesses. Um, and if you realize that when you have a lab partner that's not necessarily going exactly the way you thought it should be, or you're out in the community and you may be working at a, you know, a food bank or something like that, and this person's not doing things exactly the, same, the way that you think it should, are they going to, is it going to go better that you say, well, how do you want to do this? You know how you want to do it, but to say to somebody, well, how would you do it? That's all they need. That's all anyone needs. So it, it, and it all comes back around to, to the way, it, through compromise and the way it's going to be anyway. So to, to constantly compromise, listen, recognize the people that will help you to get where you need to be. 
um, everybody is a wealth of information and knowledge, and we can't all know everything. I, you know, I, I'm able to work through, you know, human resource issues and things that other people can't even tolerate, and you know, my husband can do calculations until the sun goes down. But at the end of the day, it's all about the way you handled and the, everything that happened throughout the day and the balance and what you listened to and the things you brought, the people you brought in. And it's okay for people to drop off because that's the natural process. But it's recognizing that this person has a strength that is my weakness, and I better keep them around. And that's not necessarily, you know, a, this big high maintenance kind of thing. It's simply recognizing and telling them, you've got these great strengths. I recognize those in you, and I would love to find out more about that. Then you connect instantly with the, these kinds of people, and then you, you have a, a library, so to speak, of people throughout your college careers and those things of people that you learn from. You may never see them again, but those are things that you can put into your library for future, and also recognizing that that's part of the, that weakness that you have, and it, it's something that you're going to need for the future. Um, in closing, I want to thank everybody. Um, I'm, we're going to have some questions and answers, some Q&A here. But what you all need to know is that every single one of you, again, you get to be what you want to be, you get to do what you want to do. You don't know what that is right now. So just soak it all in and enjoy the people that, you, that you're around. Um, and make sure you understand your strengths and you gain the confidence that you need in those strengths to move you forward um, to wherever it is that you're going to go. I know it can be done. I did it at 50. Everybody thought I was crazy. But it's been fun, not without a lot of work. So does anybody have questions? Yes. Um, the first question is, what educational background does my son have and how did we fund our company? Uh, the first um, question, my son has a degree in international business management and chemistry. He graduated magna cum in one and cum in the other. Um, and how we funded our company was my house. My wonderful husband says, yes, you can go get a second mortgage on the house. And then we needed additional funds, and we got an SBA loan. Um, and we did all this, which is another reason that it was meant to be. We did all this when the banking industry was falling out. So, it, and it's the confidence to be able to go in. So does that answer your question? Thank you. Yes. Okay, the question is, will I have enough money when we're done to take care of all my family? Oh, absolutely. Um, it will all be worth it because I get to work doing what I love to do, and then it will be time for my son to help me. Honestly, it's going to swap. We, um, we make a good living. I, like I said, it's not really important to me at this point. It's making sure that my family is taken care of. Um, but we have, um, if you make that clear to your partners up front, they will get you through it and everything's going to be just fine. It's a lot of work, though. Uh, worth it. Worth every single day. Thank you for the question. Anyone else? Yes.
Um, the question is, what challenges do I have um, with my business being a non-traditional women industry? Honestly, when I came from working um, at Wells Fargo, I was used to working in a very white-collar uh, world. And um, the job that I had when I left, I was the vice president over private banking, which meant I also had wealthy clients. Going to um, a very blue-collar truck driver um, world, I had no idea what I was in for. Um, and also the industry is very male-dominated. What I found was that you, you don't have to be a harsh woman in the men's industry to succeed. You just have to be a nice one. So I just decided that I was going to kill them with kindness. And um, they have really enjoyed, I found, having a woman in a men's industry because it adds a whole new perspective and dimension to um, what is typical out there in the transport and automobile industries. And um, it, it just kind of grounds everything. Does, does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other questions? Ah, oh, come on. Go ahead. The question um, he has is, what, why did it take 18 months to secure my contract with eBay, and what were the obstacles, and what, we ha what did we have to do to go through to get that contract? Uh, first, let me say eBay Motors is extremely difficult to get a contract with. Um, anything that has to do with eBay, they, are, they hold very, very closely their customer service, their ways of doing business, they're very private. They have rules about everything. Their customer service is everything. So the reason it took 18 months is we had to prove to them that we had the systems in place and we had to pay for all that and put them into place before they would even go into negotiations with us. That is having a customer service team, um, our, all of our stuff on our website, customers being able to communicate with us, um, also all of the, th this, the things like insurance. We have to have a $4 million insurance policy because eBay Motors doesn't want to be held liable for anything. So we had to go through lawyers and find out what typical, you know, when, when someone is hurt, say a truck driver kills somebody on the road, what is the typical court, you know, what do they give to those people? Well, it came up, it was $2 million. So it took 18 months to find all of these, answer all these questions and put into place everything that they needed to be able to even look at a contract. The cost was about $50,000 for us to do all of that. Um, and then they also, when it came right down to it, they looked at us at the closing table when we signed our contract and said, the reason that we got that contract was because we are a Utah company. It came right down to us being from Utah. And they felt like we were family, which was interesting to us. So, so you, they, we, they were going to do it anyway, in other words. But they, we had to jump through all the hoops. But that has, it's been wonderful for us, and the partnership has been, it's priceless. Any other questions? Yes. Perfect. Okay, the question is, is that you have an online business that you're starting, um, little funds, and you'd like to know how you could drive and market it, right? What kind of a business is it? Emergency preparedness. Okay, wonderful. Congratulations, first of all. 
Um, what we have found is I'm not the guru on that SEO stuff. I know you guys know all about all of that. The websites, the Facebook, all of that. I'm getting better at it. However, that drives everything. We have a company, and I, I, if you want to come up afterwards, I'll give you my email address. For $200 a month, they will drive that like you cannot believe. And they will make sure that you've got posts on your Facebook page. And what, they're, what they do is they'll they do so many a day, so many a week. They'll put you to Facebook. They'll put you to your website, those kinds of things. They'll post stuff on both of them for you. I think that once you start getting, it looks like, how, what, I, what I mean to say is, you are only as big as you appear to be. So if you have the appearance that are, a lot of people are going on there, then people gravitate it, and it snowballs. Um, when people call us from eBay Motors, they don't know that I am in office in Midvale, and there's only eight of us. People will refer to us as a very large company. So it's all about the appearance, and I think that's a way to start. It's a very inexpensive way, um, and if you don't have the $200, you might could get some friends and family, help you do the same thing to go on your website and do blogs, do that Facebook thing. I gotta tell you, it made my, my made right company go off the charts last week. I, I, it was amazing. And up until about a month ago, I would have fought it till the end. But I, I'm, it, it's amazing what it's done. So does that answer your question? Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No of it, I do. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, not at all. Um, the question is, is he starting a, his own company, a restaurant, already has funding, which it, you're, it, you're doing it, but it's backwards from normal, everybody else. That you've got a huge advantage with that funding. So you already have the funding, wondering where to get your suppliers and start. Is that the question? What I would do is I would call other restaurants that you admire, that you like their food, and ask them where they get their supplies. Tell them how wonderful their food is, how much you like it, what you're doing in a non-competitive way, and they will share everything with you. Companies like to be recognized and be told that what they're doing is great. Um, you also have, if you'd like me to also, I have some connections with Nicholas. Um, one, of, one of my really good friends owns Nicholas Foods. So those kinds, she, she might be able, I could put you in touch with her, and she could kind of give you some contacts if you needed some smaller things. Um, but I think that asking those that you want to mimic in a non-confrontational, non-competitive way, it really will help out there. Does that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? I think that we are about out of time, but I wanted to thank you all very much for having me. Um, this is a lot of fun. If anybody has any questions or you'd like other information or my information to do some things offline, please come and I'll, I will, I'll give you um, my email address and we can go from there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, thanks again to Cindy, and we'll see you all next week.